car chilling okay cool we're on day two now it's an event the day before in the previous video that was a private track day uh homie's birthday it was a good event and today today we got a lot more people we have a whole lineup of 86s we have a <laughs> we have a subaru sliding i'm really excited to see that but looking forward to it we actually got to go get tech now so gonna take my car to go get tech gonna get wristbands gonna get ready to go should be great it looks like it's gonna be a fun event i can't wait i'm actually gonna start like trying to hit some tandems with everybody um with the car breaking down on the previous video um it does feel a little funky the alignment isn't perfect obviously but it's good a little bit more left foot braking and we're all set so let's go get tech all right easy peasy we passed tech we are number 126 but he checked if anything was loose you need a fire extinguisher battery needs to be tied down obviously it can look like you're leaking stuff and i'm a okay so we passed driver's meeting or sorry we passed tech I'm gonna head back with the guys see when they're gonna start hitting some laps i'm gonna do a few warm-up laps see if the actually before i do warm-up laps i'm gonna jack up the car and make sure that my heim joints in the rear aren't like loose or anything just in case because yeah what happened on the previous video was a little weird but um i'll just check the rear end real quick before i do some laps again stays breaking so in that last lap i was trying to drive and something felt a little funky something felt a little off sure enough i checked the footage tapped them in the front and in that tap you can see that tie rod has uh seen better days and um, if you guys remember the tie rods that i have they're uh e90 tie rods inner tie rods but i've cut them three quarters and re-tapped them three quarter and i have to run that because of the slr uh little adapter thing that connects the inner and outer it. you keep those threads in there we'll cut out the bent part we'll weld in a piece of metal i'm gonna try to source the night tie rod try to figure this out oops camera try to uh am i still on super view i think i am well <laughs> you know <laughs> so i got super lucky super super lucky there's an auto zone that's about 10 minutes away from the track and an o'reilly's i went to both auto zone had one in stock o'reilly's <laughs> had one in stock so we have the e90 tie rod but you guys remember in my install video when i was doing the slr ultra arms i have to tap and die my control arm uh by about three quarter and if i could do that it'll fit with my slr stuff ended up going to a hardware store and finding out they don't have the right thread you know tap and die set that goes that large it's an m14 1.5 so I'm gonna try to look for that at Lowe's. I doubt they have it, but if they do, great. If they don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to figure it out. All right, a little bit of a progress update. It's been a couple hours since I've last recorded. The car is all back together, but it's not where it used to be. If you guys remember how I tapped and re-threaded the E90 tie rod, well, that was because if I didn't do that and I just had the E90 tie rods as it is, it's towed out like an extra degree or two from where it's supposed to be and it was a little much so i couldn't get my hands on a tap and die i went to a couple stores nothing so this wheel was towed out so what i did is i towed in the other side and then moved the steering wheel over and centered that the wheels and counteracted the the tow if that makes any sense so originally my wheel was like out over here and that was straight so i ended up taking off the wheel flipping it and putting it back in so now the wheels back aligned and the wheels are back straight but now my rack is offset like i'd say 20 percent over more favoring one side than the other which 
you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's a fix. The car drives. I've done one lap on it and it rips though. It, it's cool. It feels a little wonky. I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, it's not gonna feel perfect, but for the meantime, car's fixed, car's cool. I'll get some more footage for you guys. It's just kind of weird because once I got my car running, they were doing qualifying runs for tomorrow's competition, but it's all good. All right, man. Back so, in the car. We're gonna go take a little trip. So hopefully Bayron sent me that phone clip and um, that was pretty scary, man. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy almost caught on fire. That well, he did real. catch fire. Or, yeah, but and almost then, burnt the car down. Yeah, someone decided to like blow on it more with the cigarette in his mouth and it caught more fire. I saw the fire start and I just start picturing like Grange during Drift Week when that guy lost his bet and I was just like uh, yeah. having Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> Dude, that gas cap just trying to like light on fire. We all ran out here with fire extinguishers. Seriously. This guy's car caught on fire. So originally his tire was on fire and when I got here they put it out and everyone like relaxed and then his gas cap just incinerated and just turned on. <laughs> Insane. And so everyone got so obviously scared as fuck as gas, you know? But holy crap. That's intense. Thank you everyone. Yeah. I appreciate it. Deal. Way to be happy. Yeah, I'm gonna let it burn now. So, yeah. anyways, I haven't been driving. I need footage. And Don's like, bro, there's a scale down the street. Let's go weigh the car. Yeah, so we're gonna see how much it weighs. I did I, my vert earlier. It weighs 33.50. It's kind of a heavy bitch. Yeah, and for the amount of like more, like the car feels faster. So oh yeah, I'm wondering if you can make it somehow lightweight. So there's some weight to be pulled out with like the seat is like 50 pounds, and then there's like <laughs> uh, airbag shit in the back for the pop-up roll bars. It's pretty heavy, so we can get that out. But. I'm curious what this is gonna be. Yeah, I've what's had, your guess? It's completely gutted and there's an LS. So my guess, 34, maybe almost 34. 35. No, sorry, 24 to 25 with me in it. Hopefully. All right, I'm saying that you're gonna land around 2750. 2750? Okay, better. All right, 2750, 2200 or so, he said. 25, 2750, 2800. 2800. Get up close so you guys can see. Yep, he was at 2800. We just got out, 2600. That's a thick ass boy. <laughs> Damn boy. Damn boy, he's thick. <laughs> <laughs> 2800, he's a thick ass boy! <laughs> so it's 2600 without flat, right? 2, yeah, 2600 without you, 2800 with you. Uh, how do I weigh like. 2750, bro? I'm hella close, bro. That's a dub. Let's go. Damn. Alright, 2600, that's, that's not bad. No, it's light, bro. That's super light. Clear. Five minutes later. to do some runs off camera and just enjoy my life a little bit because the track they reversed the layout so instead of sending it that way you're coming this way all this corvette's about to show you guys so 
super sick right well i did i did two tandems with don and then on like that very first tandem the car just started feeling weird again and we're back to what happened yesterday or sorry previous video uh that heim joint snapped again which is super weird because i tightened it so hard and i've only done a handful of laps so the fact that it's coming undone like that i don't really like that but i'm gonna jack up the car i'm gonna inspect it see what actually broke and uh, we'll go from there yeah so i just jacked up the car that's all i've done and voila okay so i think i've came to my conclusion on what i'm gonna do so all right if you guys remember on the last video the internal thing i ended up flipping it around because there was good threads on the other side screwed it back in tightened everything nice and tight and we were good but now both sides of the threads are sheared off inside this thing i do have another option of throwing this back in there so i'd clean the threads with the flap disc on a grinder clean them clean them clean them insert them into this and then weld this nut all the way around into that now if i do the weld i completely ruin this entire this entire part of the kit and i would have to get a new kit and a new arm because i welded this shut to whatever the toe it's given me so do i want to weld it and drift for another couple hours or should i do the adult thing call it a, call it off like i'm good and then i can order the new internals swap out the internals and then i have a fresh kit all over again and then i can brainstorm how i could you know going forward how the heck i can avoid this problem for happening again because right now um yeah i think i'm gonna lean towards just calling it it's fine things happen i drove like 12 hours to this event it sucks but if i weld it i don't want to ruin this piece because this piece is still good i can take off this top nut take off this bottom nut the whole guts of it come out i insert new guts fresh threads i replace this fresh threads and we're back to how we were the driver's side has not moved it is tight it is good i don't get why this passenger side has been like just taking a beating especially for this track layout the entry i flick over to driver's side and that driver's side wheel takes all the pounding but you know these things happen it is what it is so i think i'm just gonna call it here i am just hoping that i have enough footage for at least two days um you know obviously friday saturday for me there is a whole nother day of drifting tomorrow but like i said i'm just gonna call it off we're good here it is what it is these things happen i'm not like mad or anything but you know it just sucks that i know went so far for a drift event but it is what it is thank you guys for watching i appreciate you guys make sure you guys like comment if you know of any other solutions besides garagistics little serrated toe plate thingies on the subframe or mrt engineering irp is the same thing if you guys know of any other companies that do something cool for the e30 rear ends let me know in the comments down below peace